Dover, Pennsylvania, population 22,000, has long been a farm town. In recent years, it's become a bedroom community for people who work in the Baltimore area. They all came for the quiet, conservative lifestyle, and these days, barber Mike Myers says they want it back. It's a small town, and, and we never had this much attention. You know, we're not used to it. That's exciting sure. at first, but... Oh, it's, at first it was like, oh, this is pretty neat, what's going on here? And now it's like, geez, it's all time. Just leave? It's oh. just time to, time to pack up and get another oh. subject. The subject that put Dover into the national spotlight was intelligent design. In 2004, Dover's solidly Republican school board asked ninth grade biology teachers to add a statement about intelligent design when they taught evolution. Which basically stated that in that statement that evolution had gaps in it, so therefore to fill in those gaps, uh, they felt that there was another theory out there from a scientific standpoint that could be reviewed, and that was called intelligent design. Former school board member David Napierski says the change broadened students' understanding about human origins. Intelligent design supporters say some biology is so complex it could only be the result of design. No designer is identified, but critics say intelligent design is simply creationism in disguise. The school board's action drew national media and legal attention. The American Civil Liberties Union filed a suit in behalf of a group of parents. Intelligent design is a religious proposition. It doesn't belong in public school science classes. The school board was defended by the Thomas More Center, a conservative advocacy group. Attorney Richard Thompson. It is the ability of school boards to allow public students to know about other theories besides Darwin's theory. After weeks of testimony in the lawsuit, but before the judge could rule, voters in Dover delivered their verdict on election night, November 8th. All eight members of the school board who were up for re-election were defeated. John Altman is a political scientist at York College. I think a lot of the voters felt like the school board had, in a way, maybe embarrassed the community, you know, brought unwanted attention to the community, um, made the community seem like it was uh, a, a backwards, you know, um, rural uh, place. And I think they sent a message that that's not what Dover, Pennsylvania, is about. Ironically, he says voters in Dover probably supported the teaching of intelligent design alongside evolution. Polls show a majority of Americans do. And newly elected board members like Terry Emig and Bernadette Renking say it was an emotional issue for many voters. You had the certain individuals that you, all, you, know, you knocked on the door, they came, the minute you told them who you were, nope, we don't like you, goodbye, and shut the door. Sometimes they couldn't, they were, would get so upset that uh, we always used to laugh and say, did you see his neck get all <laughs> And it's all a nurse, big. that concerned I you. Used to, I did talk well, to Then there was a man that came out and did a monkey dance, dance for, for me. <laughs> as strong supporters of evolution, they say they were often branded as atheists. All of us, I know we are all Christians. And so uh, it's just um, sometimes I wonder exactly what the problem is because all of us believe in God and so, you know, uh, that's not, that's really not a question with us. It beliefs. seems to be possible both to believe in God and to accept the theory of evolution because one is about belief and faith and the other is about science and education. Right. The lawsuit may have hurt ousted school board members, most of them devout, proclaimed conservative Christians. I believe in the principles of the Bible, and the Bible clearly shows through Genesis. Uh, you know, I believe in the creationism view uh, with respect to how God created the world and so forth, yes. Yet in court, board members argued that their new curriculum and intelligent design were all about academics and science and not religiously motivated. Why is academic freedom? <coughs> That decision to separate their religious beliefs from their legal arguments likely turned off some of their supporters, according to Dennis Hall, a pastor at Dover's Friendship Community Church. They should have said, yes, we did it because this is what our faith believes in. Um, but they said, no, we, we did it because of uh, science or whatever.
that would have been a, a legally fatal thing to do, would it not? Yeah, certainly I understand why they did said that. But the, uh, the reasoning behind it, the feeling behind it, I, I think is because of their, their, their values, their religious values. There are people that continued to misunderstand intelligent design, and those people who felt it was religious in nature felt, okay, school board members, we think this is religious in nature. You need to push this on a religious platform. So therefore, there were people from a religious standpoint that were angry. The new members say they're aware of that anger and division, even though it looked like a clean sweep. Judy McIlvain notes only a few hundred votes separated the two sides. This was hardly a landslide victory. No. Almost half the voters <clears throat> did not vote for us. And we have to be very mindful of that going right. forward, and we know that. And McIlvain and colleagues on the new board say intelligent design does have its place in the classroom, just not in science class. I'd like to see it put in a, a philosophy class or a world history class as an elective so that all religions can be discussed. There's such a need for multicultural understanding across the gamut of religions, whether it's uh, uh, the Muslim faith, Judaism, Christianity, exactly. Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, etc., etc., etc. And I think intelligent design uh, as a topic needs to be placed in that context, as was said earlier, so that it can perhaps uh, galvanize some discussion and awaken some understandings and some tolerance that might not otherwise be the case. In the end, the words of one national broadcaster may do more than anything else to unify people in Dover. Televangelist Pat Robertson. I'd like to say to the good citizens of Dover, uh, if there is a disaster in your area, don't turn to God. You just rejected him from your city. Uh, I think there's only one piece of his statement that I even agreed with. Uh, and, and once again, as he started off with the good citizens of Dover, I think he should have let it rest there. The Robertson statement revived some people's sense of humor, as when our interview was interrupted by a phone call. Another That's Pat Robertson calling. <laughs> Just leave it alone, Alex. <coughs> Sorry, Pat, she's busy. <laughs> Just wanted to tell you there was a tornado. On the, way. <laughs> the new board members take office December 5th and say they'll look to a legal higher power before making any decisions on curricular changes. The judge's word, whatever it is, is going to carry great weight. And I think it's going to, to do some work toward helping the community start to heal because that will, you know, it's not a school board saying, well, hey, this is how it's going to be. This is a judge making a ruling on a case where both sides got to present their side fully. This should bring some closure, at least for our community. Uh, I'm sure there are many other communities throughout the United States that will be waiting for this verdict with great interest. The judge's verdict in the Dover lawsuit is expected in early January.